I'm delighted to welcome today Lisa Warner, who is the author of, um, oh crikey, Simplicity. <laughs> oh God, I've, I've lost the name. I've written, do you know I can't read my own writing? Um, uh, you have to tell us, Lisa, please. So do forgive me. <laughs> no worries. I'm the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing, which I wrote after I decided that I did not want to go the medical model when I found myself facing cancer. And so I decided to go inside and look for all the answers inside. And I discovered that my body was designed to heal itself once I brought myself back into alignment. So that I is my story. We'll go into that shortly. Do you know what I've written down here? I've written uh, author of swimming and when I read that, so don't ask me where that came from, also <laughs> swimming. So it's the simplicity that I'm supposed to, supposed to be through me completely. So cancer, what sort of cancer and when was it, Lisa? Uh, the, I, I don't really ever talk about the sort of, because cancer is just simply cancer and we have to look at it as a problem unto itself, not as what types of cancer, because that's just simply more separation. Yeah. So I wrote my book in 2013, so it was sometime prior to that. Linear time is not really my forte, <laughs> so probably 2010, 2011. Um, but uh, you know, I don't really, I don't pay attention to that so much. But um, you know, what I discovered along my journey was that our bodies are not being attacked. By cancer. Cancer is not the, the problem that they, it has been made out to mm. be. You know, as I, as I found, um, as I found myself facing this killer disease, quote unquote, um, I looked at what the medical model had as solutions and chemo and radiation and appointment after appointment and heavy duty pharmaceuticals or radical surgeries. And none of those things appealed to me. And you know, I never liked going to the doctor to begin with. And I thought, well, this is my time to just simply get out of the whole system. And you know, if I can learn how to heal myself, then I'm not gonna need doctors anymore. Because once I know how to heal myself, then I'm home free. Because you heal yourself once, you can heal yourself a million times. It doesn't make a difference. So that was the answer that I needed. I wanted to find out how to heal my own body. I am body, mind, and soul, just as everybody else. And I knew that as the soul, I have all the answers right inside. So it was, I knew that it was my mind that I needed to get out of the way. Um, so I had been, I had grown up as a really healthy, fit athlete, and I had this really super great body that just did anything I asked of it to do. It could, I, I was a, a, an elite figure skater. Um, you know, I could jump through the air and spin like a top and I could, I was super strong and fit and flexible. I could climb trees and dive down to the bottom of the lake. Like my body did all kinds of cool stuff. So I knew that that was my normal, natural state of being. But once I graduated from, from high school and I was supposed to get out in the world and find some job, like... I never could figure out what job it was that I was supposed to do <laughs> and, you know, in order to earn a living. And I was obviously already here living and I didn't know what it was that I was supposed to earn, like on this beautiful planet that really gives us everything we need when we simply work with it and share with each other. I just, I couldn't figure out why this society was so <laughs> messed up. And I just couldn't figure out how to fit myself into a messed up society. So I ended up struggling. I was struggling financially. I was struggling in relationships. I was just struggling with, you know, what, what type of job am I supposed to have? And um, the more I struggled, the less fit and healthy I became, the more stressed I became, the more depressed I became, the more unhealthy I became until finally one day it was like, oh my gosh, here I am facing cancer. And I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that it was my struggles that had caused my body to move into this state of degradation. And uh, so I knew that 
chemo was certainly not going to help me figure out what type of job I was I needed to have or you know what my soul song was or why I was here on this planet so I decided that instead of going the medical route and looking for somebody else to fix me I decided that I was going to fix myself and you know along the way I just, I found out that I was never broken to begin with <laughs> I just had all kinds of ideas that had been programmed in about who we are supposed to be and how we're supposed to act and what we're supposed to do in the world and what I realized finally was that inner peace is where it's at inner peace is where the healing is that happiness is where the healing is that it doesn't come from a pill or a shot or somebody else doing it for us. And along the way, I decided that, you know, I would sit and meditate and I would get quiet and I would start to ask for the answers to be, you know, to be shown the answers. And I was guided to a course called Mastering Alchemy, where I started to learn, you know, alchemy, the, the art of transforming one thing into another. Uh, you know, from one state of being to another state of being. I started to learn how energy works and how physical reality is generated. And I started to learn how to manage my own energy field, my own thoughts and emotions and start clearing things out. And once I started to look at energy and all of the non-physical things, it was very clear to me how the non-physical generates the physical. So I started to see how my emotions and my thoughts had been generating the physical circumstances. And I started to realize that my body was responding to my emotions and that my body was directly responding to my emotions and that my body was actually trying to help me to clear those emotions and rebalance myself and when i was able to see clearly when i was able to see that my body was not being attacked by some killer disease but that my body was literally trying to help me through my emotional struggles everything shifted and everything changed and i started to realize that the medical model is not the be all and end all of of healing and that it's not even accurate to begin with you know that our bodies are literally designed to heal themselves but we have to give the we have to give them the opportunity to do that and we have to create the proper environment in which the body can heal itself if we don't look at our emotions if we don't bring ourselves back into balance if we don't bring ourselves back into inner peace it doesn't happen if we just simply keep going to look for the doctor, go to the doctor, ask them to do it for us, we're never going to find the power inside to do it ourselves. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Speaking my language, Lisa, absolutely, <laughs> definitely. And the emotional side of any healing um, situation is so, so important and it's overlooked. The medical yep. doctors aren't trained in any of this. They're not trained in nutrition. So it's not their fault. They've been conditioned the same as we've all been conditioned. Um, exactly. So the cycle has to be broken at some point. And simplicity, the word you use in the, your book title, it isn't that difficult, is it, when you know what to do? Exactly. When we start looking through a different lens, you know, we're looking, we are body, mind and soul. Two parts are non-physical, only one part is physical. The, the medical model looks at the one physical part and it doesn't see how the two non-physical parts are directly influencing the physical part. So, you know, we the mind has been programmed to go to the doctor, go find, ask your doctor, is this pill right for you? Go, you better go to your doctor to find out if you're okay. You can't possibly know if you're okay. You better go for a checkup to make sure that you're okay. And then maybe there's something in there. They better do some tests to make sure there's nothing hiding in there waiting to come out and jump and grab you. Like we're simply programmed into that mindset. And we don't need to be programmed into that mindset. We need to be pro we need to program ourselves back into the mindset of being healthy and happy when we program ourselves back into that that's where all the power is because we have the power to 
create inner peace. We have the power to heal ourselves. We have the power to bring ourselves back into alignment and nobody else can do that for us. Mm, absolutely i get sick of hearing myself say all, all what you just said and it, it really is an inside job um, we have to we have to fix the inside environment we have to fix our mind um look at it through a different pair of glasses you know wh whatever language you know we need to use but again language language is very important and so many people i hear them say oh i've got such and such a condition or um, i've got terminal so and so and I think, oh, please stop talking like that because you're you're talking yourself to death. And and people actually do do that, don't they? Absolutely. You know, we are creator beings. We are souls, first and foremost. We are the soul before we come into the body. We're the soul after we leave the body. And we are the soul right here, right now in the body. And as the soul, there's nothing in the physical realm that can harm us ever but we have been conditioned to believe that we are these bodies and that these bodies are mortal, that, they're, that, that we cease to exist when the body stops functioning. You know, we are, we are conditioned to be afraid of death. We're be a conditioned into fear and we live our lives in survival mode and our bodies are literally trying to survive and help us to survive. But we're also taught that there's something wrong with our bodies, that they're being attacked by these killer diseases. And it's simply not true. And, but as the soul, we create what we believe. We are here living out our beliefs and anything that we put our attention on, anything that we focus on, anything that we believe to be true, we are going to experience. So as long as we are continuing to believe that we have these diseases and we claim that this is what we have become some, because some doctor gave us a label, we're just simply going to live out that story as if it was real, even though it's not real. And, and why is it that there are people like us that we, that we just know we're being told lies? and we take our own action and that the rest of the population you know 99 percent of the world just goes along with oh doctor knows best you know what pill can i take and then if they're on one medication they'll end up on three it always seems to be an odd number for some reason if they're on three it's five seven nine so it goes on and i've, I've been supporting well in fact this lady's given up now um it's really sad um she gave me a list of the medications she was on every single medication they're all bog standard ones that are you know they're, they're very very common drugs and they all have such side effects and they've they've all been introduced to her because of the side effect of the pre previous one and so and i just think oh my goodness you know right? but, they, but she believes that it's it's the way because the doctors said so I, I i just can't work with people like that anymore now i've tried and unless the person is ready to make a change ready to to try something different there's just no there's just no hope is there for for some people i mean you can't change somebody's mind for them they have to be willing to change their own mind and you know we have to be able to see past these limitations um you know to to your the answer you know, my answer to your question, you know, why are, why are some of us able to see this? You know, I think that we incarnated and we have a soul purpose here on this, on this planet. We have a soul mission. We are the ones that are the light bringers. We are the ones who are here bringing new consciousness to the planet. Uh, you know, humanity has been living under this duress, under, in this state of survival mode for hundreds of thousands of years. And these are patterns that are deeply, deeply ingrained in the human psyche. And they're taught from generation to generation. As each new generation comes forth, they're taught, this is the way the world is. This is, these are the rules. This is what you have to do. This is how you have to act. This is where you have to go to school. This is what you have to think. And everybody just has to go kind of, as children, we don't really have any recourse to that. You know, when the entire world, our parents, the teachers, the preachers, the everyone around us is saying, this is what you have to do. These are the rules. 
if you don't do this, we're going to punish you. What else are you going to do? We have to go into the programming to avoid the consequences, right? So we're living our entire lives trying to avoid the consequences. So we're told that the consequences are going to be death. They're going to be imprisonment. They're going to be, you know, fines or whatever it is that make us go in these different directions. You know, I'm not going to like you anymore if you don't do this, <laughs> you know? So we keep living from the consequences, trying to avoid the consequences. But in doing that, we are creating the exact things that we're trying to avoid. Mm. So as, as the light bringers, we are the ones who are here to change consciousness. When I was a very little girl, I would lay in my bed at night and I would just become part of the unified field of unconditional love. I would find myself floating in space and I was looking at the earth and I could see the history of humanity. I could see the wars that were being fought. I could see the old people in nursing homes just these death watch facilities waiting to die and these bodies that didn't work anymore. And I knew that the earth did not need to be that way. It was clear to me at three years old that I was supposed to be able to live for 150 or 200 years. But then I looked around and I went, well, obviously that's not happening on this planet. That must not be available. So I assumed that I was wrong, but what I'm realizing now is I wasn't wrong. This is what our, our bodies are actually designed to last for hundreds of years, but our bodies are following our consciousness. So we've been, we have been programmed to believe in aging and death, that it's an, a reality and an inevitability. And we just look at everybody else around and we look at the, we count the birthdays this is why I don't do the linear time thing. Mm -hmm. Like we count the, we count the years. Oh, now I'm 40. Uh oh, I don't know. Uh oh, now I'm 50. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now it's just all mm -hmm. over the hill. Uh oh, 60. Now I'm mm -hmm. going downhill. It's all downhill from here. Wow. I'm getting old. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm getting older now. Mm -hmm. Well, we just create that for ourselves when we don't have to do this. We don't even have to age if we get rid of that whole linear time aspect and we stop counting in years and believing that we're marching ourselves to death. Mm, <laughs> like, I'm, going, I'm going backwards. Uh, when I was younger, <laughs> I decided I was going to be 142. And uh, I recently found out, like you just mentioned, 150 years. Um, so I think my 142 is, is eminently possible. But um, I'm just hoping that there'll be other people of like mind, like persuasion around to, to hang out with. But I'm finding that yeah, I am I'll mixing. still be here with you. We'll, we'll be here. Yeah, we'll be podcasting <laughs> or we'll be doing thought transference or whatever the thing will be at that point. There's all kinds of things changing, aren't there? But yeah. Um, yeah. So um, with the, with the um, recovery, did you ever go back to, to, to check to see if that you were all clear or have you just assumed that you're, you're all fine and that's the end of it? Well, see, here's the thing. We can, dis we can choose for ourselves. We can discern for ourselves if we're okay or not. We don't need some external validation to tell us if we're healthy or not. We can feel it in the body. We can choose it for ourselves. Health is something that we create. Yeah. It's something that we have to choose and then create. It's not something that happens to us. It's not a byproduct of something else. It is a choice that we make to bring ourselves into balance, to create an internal environment of peace and ease and happiness that allows us to thrive. That's where the health comes from. It doesn't come from a shot or a pill. Yeah, no matter absolutely. how much the medical model wants us to believe it. <laughs> yes, yeah, tell me about it. So, um, similar to me with my, because I had stage four cancer back in 2015, but unfortunately, uh, I'd already had um, two lots of breast cancer in 2009, 2011, but 
um, I wasn't sufficiently awake as you were when you had your um, experience. So knowing what I know now, I never would have taken the, the treatment that I had. Um, but most of it was natural. But I did have a, a bit of integrative interference, shall we say. Um, mm. and, and I know that caused my, my big stage four. But as soon as I was told that I had less than a year to live, um, I just instantly went into survival mode. You know, you don't, nobody tells me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the master of my body. I'm, I'm, I'm in charge here. And in, within three months I had an all clear scan and um, barely been back since. So uh, it, it's a decision, like you say, it's an absolute decision. It's taking responsibility, taking control, but it's an inside job. It's from the inside out and that's the end of it. So, exactly. so how do you deal with your, um, your clients? So how, how do you introduce this concept or do they already have an expectation before they come to see you that your approach is a bit different? Well, a lot of them have read my book, The Simplicity of Self-Healing. So they're kind of familiar with the, the, the mindset already. They're, they, they're already starting to see that shift in consciousness. Um, and then I have a Facebook group called Soul Sourced Healing. So I put a lot of information in that Facebook group. So most of the people that are reaching out to me are coming from one of one or more of those places. Um, you know, I do some some podcasts and interviews with other people. Um, you know, I I get to be invited into other people's communities from time to time and and do a presentation. So um, most of the people that are coming to me are the ones that have already heard me speak or have read the book. So they're already they're like, hey, wait a second, she's mm -hmm. talking my language. Yeah, this brilliant. is different. You know, this is what I need to hear. Fantastic. So what advice would you give to um, anybody who's listening to this podcast and maybe isn't aware of the, the fact that they can do something for themselves? Um, you've already alluded to, to it, but what, what, what guidance would you give them for somebody who is a completely um, led by society, shall we say? Well, we are body, mind and soul. We are the soul first and foremost. And the soul holds all the answers. The soul is directly connected to source, God, creation, living life force energy, whatever term you want to use. That is who and what we are. That is the core of our being. And when we get quiet and we start to tune in and we start to ask some really good questions, you know, we're so, we're so, trained to ask what's wrong with me or why me or you know what did I do to deserve this like I tried all those questions in the beginning and they weren't really very helpful to me you know because when we ask a question the answer is always given and I don't need the answer to what's wrong with me like I don't really want to know I don't want anything to be wrong with me so I don't need that answer mm -hmm. I want to know what's right with me I want to know how well I am I want to know that I'm okay that who I am as a being is totally fine so like I need to ask some really good quality questions so I started asking what's it going to take for me to change this mm -hmm. what do I need to know in order for this to change. And when I started to really ponder that question, I started to focus my energy and my attention on that question. What do I need to know about this in order to make it change? And I got quiet and I let my mind stop running rampant then once the mind gets quiet, the mind is the box. You know, we hear the, the saying, think outside the box. Well, the box is where we think. It's that box of predetermined limitations that we have been taught. The soul exists outside of that box, right? Think outside the box means become aware at the soul level of what the solution actually is and what the options actually are. So when we get the mind to be quiet and we focus on the silence, the soul, and we just start to ask some questions, 
And then we expect to receive the answer, but not immediately. Like the answer can come in immediately, but if we start looking, is that the answer? Is the, yeah, it, it, that's just in the mind. We have to get quiet and we have to be open to receive the answer. And pretty soon the answer will come. It might be an email that you receive. It might be a post on Facebook. It might be a song you hear on the radio. It might be a book that kind of jumps off the shelf at you in the bookstore, you know, all kinds of things. Some, a friend might call you and say, hey, did you hear this? Like, oh my gosh, how did you know I needed to know that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it, the answer can come in millions of different ways. So my answer just happened to drop in like full blown clarity. One day as I was meditating, I got quiet and suddenly it was like, Hey, Lisa, your body's not being attacked by anything. Cancer is an illusion. It's not what's actually happening to your body or anybody else's body. Your body is responding to your emotions, period. That's what's going on. And your body is actually trying to help you. Your body is communicating with you 24 seven. Your body is letting you know where you're thinking thoughts that are out of alignment with your soul. So once I understood this and it was plain as day, then I started to realize every time I've had a break, a sprain, a cut, a bruise, a burn, my body has always healed itself. So it's clear that the body is designed to heal itself. And once I stopped fearing cancer and realized, oh my gosh, this is just my own body. And my body has created these extra cells for a reason. They're there on purpose. I started to trust my body and I started to let go of all of the fear, all of those ideas that I had been taught about what's wrong with us. And I started to really tune in and I started to appreciate my body and I started to listen more and deeper and I started to trust that my body was going to heal itself and as soon as I got into that mindset that created the internal environment it gave me the peace of mind that allowed the body to return to balance and everybody can do this but we can't do it when we're running to the doctor to find out what's wrong with us because that's the programming we'll never find our own power by looking to other people, we have to find it inside. So this is what I teach. Like I don't, I don't teach people a, a, a strategy or a method or, or anything like that. I teach them how to tune in. I give them some awarenesses about here, this is why this is not true. This is why your body, what they have told you is not true about your body. And there's scientific, you know, this isn't just like, me coming up with something there's literal scientific proof that every single organ every single body part responds to a specific emotional upset and when we start to understand oh i have a lung thing oh i was really afraid that i was gonna die or that my partner was gonna die like oh now i understand why my lungs are doing the thing they're doing because the lungs respond to a death fright. You know, I, my back is, my back hurts. You know, I've been feeling really unsupported. So I've got all this lower back stuff. Like I, you know, when we start to understand, oh, this is going on in my body. I have a shoulder thing. Oh, I've been having a problem with my partner lately. Oh, all right. Now I understand my body is showing me where the problem is. And it's not the body that's the problem. The body's literally pointing directly at the problem that needs to be resolved. Or so, the problem that we have just resolved and the body is now in healing because the healing is actually the hard part. The healing is the painful part. So we have been taught that every time a symptom arises and there's pain or discomfort in the body, we have been taught that there, we're either sick or we have some disease, that there's something wrong with our bodies. 95% of the time or more, the body is actually in the healing phase. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to reframe the way we look at our body and the symptoms that it, it exhibits. Yeah, absolutely, spot on. So um, how do people get a hold of you, Lisa? 
Uh, you can find me at my through my website, connectingyoutoyou.com, spelled out in full. Um, I have a, a YouTube channel, The Simplicity of Self-Healing with Lisa Warner on YouTube. I have uh, my book on Amazon, The Simplicity of Self-Healing. And I've got contact information in there. And for people who are on Facebook, I have a, a group called Soul Sourced Healing. You can find me that way. Wonderful. And you, you mentioned um, how, how you work with people. So do you work with them, handhold them over a period of weeks or one off sessions? How does that work? Oh, I do. I do both. I do. Well, I do um, private coaching. So I'll do like a, a four session coaching package or an eight or 12 session coaching package. Um, and I, I have my uh, 12 week aligning with your radiantly healthy self program. And that is a beautiful deep dive into the self. It helps unlock the mind from the programming and starts to really help you tune in to what's really true. The powers that we have helps you tune into your soul. And it gives you some simple, simple tools to start noticing your own energy field. So you can start managing the non-physical space around you. Because when you can start to manage your own energy field, then your emotions balance themselves out, your body starts to balance itself out, you can start to clear out those emotional energies that don't belong, the fear, the doubt, the worry, the anxiety, the guilt, the shame, all of those, when you notice those things, you can start clearing them out of your energy field. And that way you don't have to go back and start reliving all of those painful things from the past, you don't have to look at all of that stuff. If you simply clear out the energy that's associated with them, you can clear out all kinds of stuff, lifetimes worth of stuff that is still in your energy field. Wonderful, the simplicity of self-healing. And um, it really is simple um, if you're ready and willing and, uh, wanting to approach something in a in a fresh pair of eyes isn't it through a, through a fresh pair of eyes yeah and the fresh pair of eyes is your own eyes it's the eyes mm. of your soul it's the eyes of your higher self so we're we look through the eyes of our mind the the ones that are attached to our physical body that looks at all the physical stuff but when we start looking through the eyes of our higher self that third eye and we start seeing the non-physical, we start seeing what's actually going on and we start seeing as the soul sees. Wonderful. Lisa Warner, connecting you to you, author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Elaine. It's been a pleasure to be here with you.